Well, greetings once more to my shop. Today's project, I'm gonna make three nice walnut platters. And one of them is gonna to go to our club president, Bruce, who is leaving and moving out of state, which is a very, very hard blow to our club. He is an awesome president. So I'll show you in this split screen what I'm gonna to do today and probably the next couple days turning some walnut platters. Now I did get this wood from Bruce, so uh, rightfully I kind of owe him a little payback and I'm gonna make him a nice platter out of this wood. So let me readjust my camera and I'll show you what I'm doing here and how I determined exactly where I'm gonna make some cuts on these pieces of wood. One of them has a big crack in it, so I had to kind of eliminate that from consideration. So let's take a look. Now initially I was hoping I could get three platters from this nice long piece of walnut here. But right in this area there's a big crack that comes down to about right here. So I think I am going to only be able to make a couple platters right here, down here. They're around 13 inches in diameter. That's not too bad and they'll make a, a couple of nice pieces. The far piece over here the same thing. It's about a 13 inch diameter uh, bowl blank or platter blank and the next thing I need to do is just cut these here and here so I can um, manage that on my bandsaw and cut those round. I'll probably take those out and uh, do that on my chainsaw. Alright now I need to do one more thing before I take this on the bandsaw. This is going to be the bottom of my bowl. This is going to be the top. And I'm a little bit uh, nervous about putting this surface right here on the bandsaw. I don't know if that's going to be uh, stable enough. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to take my, my fro. Alright, you don't see that very often, but when you need it, you need it. And you don't want to hit this with a metal hammer. And I couldn't find my proper wooden mallet, so here's a, a limb. And I'm going to just try to take off a little bit of this and level off this surface. It's a little bit too rounded. All right. Well, I didn't take off very much. I think I'm going to turn this over and, and try to take off some right here. I've got a pretty good flat surface right in here. This needs a little work down here. Turn this a little bit so you can see it. Now, I'm not taking off a lot of wood, but I think I flatten this off and I think I've got a pretty good surface to cut that round safely on my bandsaw. So let's go do that. Alrighty, I'm ready to cut a circle on the bandsaw. And let me show you, I did a little bit more work with an ax to level off this surface right in the middle. And I'm gonna use my big uh, face plate when I mount this. Now, if you are not experienced with the bandsaw, if you're new, you never, 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 a thousand times never cut something with the round side down. Now that's why I was spending so much time leveling this off. And I think I'm okay. I've got a little bit uh, of overhang, not too much. I think we'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be fine. So I turn that over. I turn that over and I'm very stable. Now, one thing I need to do is reestablish my circle. Okay. Take my, my compass. That's the way you pronounce that. I don't know. I can go back to right here. So I'm going to open this up a little bit more. There. There. All right. So there's my 
My circle reestablished, let's turn this on. I've also adjusted the, the clearance, so I think we're in good shape. Make sure our bandsaw has stopped turning. There we are. That worked out pretty good. I think that was uh, very safe and stable. So now I'm gonna put a face plate on that and do a little bit of turning. All right, we are moving right along and it's time to uh, chuck up my platter blank. And I'm not exactly sure if it's gonna be a platter or a bowl doesn't matter. So I got a face plate on that. All right, let's chuck this up here. This, this piece of wood is about 13 inches in diameter. I can get this on right there. Okay. So as I turn this, I am definitely going to put my tail center up. We'll get this locked in. We'll do some turning. All right, there we go. All right, I think it's time for my, my big tool rest. Yeah, get that lined up here. Make sure I am clearing. Now I'm gonna turn my lathe on very slowly, sort of identify where the center of this is. All right. So I'm a little bit high, and I can tell from that circle I just drew on there. I need to be cutting right at center height, so right here, we're in good shape. Now, I'm going to bring my tail center up just a second, okay, but right now I'm going to just uh, take some time and level this off where my chuck is going to go, where my tenon will be formed. So. I'm going to find an appropriate tool, put my face shield down, yes indeedy. All right, now I can barely feel my, my lathe vibrating just slightly. Now I'm turning right at 800 RPM. All right, now I am going to use my big Vicmark chuck. Uh, the chuck jaws are opening up around five, six inches. So I've got this marked on a set of dividers right here. And I'm going to just see, I've got some tool marks that are kind of indicating where I'm at with this. So I'm going to just turn my lathe on. I need to be a little smaller than that. All right. I really don't think it's necessary to stick this uh, metal divider in there with two sharp points. I like to establish a pencil line on there and right there is perfect. All right, let's move ahead. All right, now I'm going to take an eighth inch parting tool and define this area right in here. And that'll be the outside uh, edge of my dovetail from my chuck. Now, this is going to take a while, so I think I'll turn my cameras off 
and get a little closer to where this tenon is going to be. I've got a lot of wood to take off. And once I get this trued up in the center, I'm going to bring my tail center up and uh, add a little bit of support to this operation. Well, I promised I would bring my tail center up. Lock it down, put it in place. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm kind of fighting with my air conditioners this morning. There we go. Now I'm going to do a little bit of serious turning on this. I flattened off this area right in here. And I need to work on all of this out here. And what I'm going to do is use my, my big three-quarter inch bowl gouge. Nothing better for this operation. And I'm going to get my remote switch in a good, convenient, safe location. I got the speed turned down just a little bit. We'll go back up to uh, 700 or 800 RPM. I'll work on this area out here. Let's take a little time out here and see what we got. Um, this is really rough. It's a little bit punky actually right in here, but I haven't been able to make a nice push cut and that should clean that grain up fairly well. I think when I get done with this, I think I'm going to lose a lot of this nice dark heartwood, unfortunately. Not a big fan of the sapwood. Anyway, it is what it is. So I'm going to do a little bit more turning and get rid of this right here. Okay. All right, I think I took care of most of that. I've got a flat spot right here. I've got some some bark I want to get rid of. And I'm going to just keep working at this. Now I'm going to work a little bit more on my tenon. Find a little bit smaller tool. Well, I shut down yesterday and I covered up my project, put a bunch of uh, water in there, sprayed it on my bowl blank. And that's not a bad idea. If you go to lunch or if you turn around, sometimes that wood can just kind of crack and you can lose control of it. So let me uh, refocus this. There's some things I want to do on the outside and it's really kind of a, a mess to be real uh, candid with you. I got to clean some of that up. All right, here's a little closer view of the underside of my bowl. And you can see some really badly torn grain right here. I like to experiment. I like to kind of change things up a little bit. There's some bark that needs to be taken away. And ordinarily, I would do an expansion recess right here. Well, I wanted to mess around with uh, compression fixing 
and maybe put a little bit of a foot on this, which I don't usually do, but let's let's try it. Eventually, I can take this uh, this tenon down about halfway, so it's not quite so so thick. So anyway, I'm going to continue with my tail center for support. Make sure that's. Uh, secure I get my face shield and uh, I'm going to try to clean up some of this area right in here and then we'll reverse this now I'm wearing a glove be very careful around your lathe if you're ever wearing a glove the shavings coming off this are a little painful all right I'm going to start with my speed down a little bit I'm going to start down here cleaning up this surface uh, partly with a scrape. Turn the lay speed up. take a look at this yeah that improved that a lot right in here and I didn't really reach this area but down here it looks pretty good and if I can get in there and do a push cut all the better all right now one thing that's keeping me from turning my lathe speed up where I really want it and where I need it is the top part of this bowl blank it's very out of balance so I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna true that up and just level this surface off. That's much better. Okay, my lathe is spinning about uh, 1000 RPM right now. You got to move a couple things out of the way, including my tail center. Fold that down, and boy, that's a, a nice feature on this American Beauty lathe. Anyway, all right, I completely got that bark taken away, and I'm really glad I did. This allowed me to put a little bit of an OG in here. I got a convex and a concave surface. Just to show this grain a little bit better, I'm going to put some water on there. Yeah, it's okay. I'm not a big fan of the sapwood. Now on the top side of my bowl, there's a lot more of that heartwood. So, okay, so let me remove my my project from the uh, spindle. All right, now I've got my larger Vicmark chuck on the spindle. I've got my tenon all ready to go. I'm 
Now that tenon is sized a little bit large. In case I end up rough turning this bowl and in a couple months putting it back on the lathe, I'll have a little bit of thickness to uh, adjust that tenon. My drill and take all this off and start on the inside of this. Okay, it's time to work on the top side of this bowl. And in real time turning, something like this takes uh, two, three hours for me. By the time I get it all sanded, and I'll uh, do a little bit of that later on. But some of the following footage I've got sped up just to kind of get through this. This is a good backed off view showing uh, the tool handle in relation to my body. Um, and you're really doing the turning with your knees. And I'm just kind of hogging out wood uh, rather quickly here to get to a point where I can uh, do some finer cutting on this. Somewhere along the line, this bowl turns into a finished green turn bowl. The wood is not very wet. Um, if I remember, I'll do uh, a moisture meter check on this, but I suspect it's maybe around 12 to 15 percent. And if I finish turn this, it's not going to move a, a lot. And it really seems pretty dry. Working on the rim just a little bit, and the tool I'm using is my regular bowl gouge with a 40 degree nose angle on that. There's a good close up of uh, the surface leveled off with the ridges that allow me to uh, place my bevel in each one of those. And I, I get a good uh, place to, to rub that bevel and make those cuts. I don't have to worry too much about my tool skating back. So we'll make another pass through there and hollow out a little bit more wood. I've got some... Uh, oh, here's my calipers and uh, it's a good thing I did check because I'm getting a little bit thin down there so I go back to the rim and finish it up and this is where I really decide I'm going to finish this bowl I'm not going to put it away in shavings I do seal it later I'll talk about that when I finish it I've got a little ridge right there that uh, I mark with a pencil and go back to my deep fluted bowl gouge, take that off. And the bit right there, uh, I'm kind of working across the grain. I'm not doing a push cut. Well, there I am. Just kind of get that wood taken away so I can do a proper push cut. Uh, check it with my calipers once again. And I think here I go to my bottom feeder. And I'm not using this tool very long, but just enough to clean up the, the bottom. And I don't really need that 60 degree angle to avoid hitting the rim. Uh, I'm using it to make a nice clean cut on the bottom of my bowl more than anything. A little bit more. Make a nice slow pass down through the center. Now somewhere in here I go to a negative rake scraper right here. I've got some uh, tool marks that I'm going to take away and you can see the very fine bits of wood coming off the end of this tool. I don't have any torn grain and that's my rule. If I have torn grain I have to keep 
uh, going at it with a push cut on a proper cutting tool and get rid of that torn grain. But if I don't have torn grain, I can use my negative rake scraper just to kind of level that surface off and take away any tool marks that still remain. Yeah, and I'm happy with that surface. The grain is uh, part sapwood and part heartwood, and I'm okay with it. It's, it's kind of interesting. It's all right. Let's move on. All right, now I've spent some time sanding the inside of my bowl, and I've sanded this to about 320 grit, and I think that's probably good enough. I intend this to be a, a food server, a salad server, and I'm gonna do a little bit of finishing on this, and I'm actually gonna do a, a video uh, on applying finishes on the lathe, and you'll probably see this bowl in the future. Anyway, right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply a little finish on this, I'm gonna bring up my tail center and reverse this and take off the foot or do something with the foot and finish the uh, bottom of this bowl. All right. I'm just sealing this bowl with some shellac. I'm gonna put an oil finish on this later on. So I'm ready to reverse this walnut bowl and deal with the foot, okay? And I'll probably leave a little bit of a foot on there. I've got a good thickness all the way through. All right, I am ready to reverse my walnut bowl. I've got... Uh, Plenty of finish applied to this. It's ready to go. I could probably stop right there, but let me just take this out of the, the chuck jaws. So there's the bottom. Needs a little bit of uh, fine tuning. Now, as a food server, I want to make the foot on this uh, as large a diameter as I can. So I'm going to use that entire dimension there. So. Let me bring my tail center up and we'll put this between centers and work on the foot. All right, now what I have here is a drive block. It's got an expansion recess here that I'm gonna put into these jaws. I'll put this between centers basically. Bring up my tail center and of course my bowl and we'll finish off the foot. All right, so I have some shelf liner attached to my drive block for protection. Bring my tail center up. Make sure everything is locked down. All right, now I'm gonna go back to my 5 8 inch bowl gouge and do a little bit of shear scraping along here. And I'm going to just really do this off camera. I'll show you a little bit of it. We'll get that up to turning speed. I suspect that's uh, about 700 RPM. I'm going to increase the speed just a little bit on that. All right, now I have to be very careful. I've got the bottom of my bowl sanded. I've got two or three coats of a finish on there. I started with uh, some shellac, like I did on the inside. And now I have to work on the foot. I have to be really careful I don't get a run back and ruin my surface. I'm gonna bring my tool rest up. Find a appropriate tool. All right, now I've got a 
Oh, half inch bowl gouge. Turn the speed up just a little bit on this. A little bit more speed going. Alright, I think I'm done. A little bit of sanding and I'll be completed. Now you'll notice that I made a push cut going in this direction and I was going against the end grain but the alternative is maybe uh, not as good a cut or a finish, just scraping that. So I think, I, I think I'm good with that. A little sanding and I'll show you the finished bowl. Now ordinarily I will leave a bowl on my lathe for two, three, four days. Now I'll go to another lathe and do something else. So this gives that uh, finish plenty of time to dry. Right now I've got like three coats of, uh, of that oil on there. The only thing I need to do now is, is apply a finish to my foot, okay? And I'm gonna leave a little area down there so I can sign it. It's better if you just leave some, some bare wood down there uh, without having to sign over the finish. Anyway, I think Bruce is going to like this bowl. It's pretty cool. Maybe I'll keep it. But I got two more to, to finish. I got two more over there. I need to uh, get, get busy and they'll be pretty much like this one right here. Yeah.